Welcome to Making It with Terry Woolman, the show that explores the secrets, successes, and strategies for making it in the music biz. And now, here's your host, Terry Woolman. Welcome to the show, and thanks for tuning in. I want to say a quick thank you to my guest on last week's episode, Alan and Marilyn Bergman. If you didn't get to hear it, you can listen to the Bergman's interview and all of our episodes and all of our hosts, uh, you know, uh, John Robinson, Jackie Bertoni, and all of our other um, hosts on Intertalk Radio. But you can go to intertalkradio.com slash making it or download our app and take us with you. Also, be sure to tune in next week to hear from vocalist Melanie Taylor, who has shared the stage with such artists as Barry Manilow, Joe Walsh, John Mayer, Bette Midler, and Aerosmith, to name just a few. I'd like to take a moment to also thank the companies that helped me sound my best when performing live or in the studio recording and producing music. That's Taylor Guitars, Duesenberg Guitars, Seymour Duncan Pickups, Diodario Strings and Planet Waves, Mesa Boogie Amps, Motu Digital Performer, Fishman Acoustic Amps, IK Multimedia, Exotic Pedals, and Blue Microphones. Thank you for your support. So often, I get asked questions about the creative process. So I created this show to focus on what it takes to have a lasting career in the ever-changing landscape of the music business. You're really in for a treat, as I've invited my friends, some of the best and brightest in music, to share their stories on how they have influenced the music that has shaped our lives. I guarantee you're going to love it. So let's get started. My guest today is Jason Goroff. The passionate, emotional, and enjoyable pleasure that is first experienced when hearing a song is almost always felt when hearing that recording on the radio. Radio airplay is one of the key cornerstone elements in the marketing of a recording artist. Radio airplay has been compared to the border to the marketing puzzle. All of the other elements fall into place more easily once the border is established. Goroff Music Marketing is regarded is regarded as the top promotion firm in the smooth jazz radio format. Their experience, knowledge, and relationships with radio and recorded music have helped many musicians establish their careers. Artists they have worked with, in addition to myself, include Melissa Manchester, Dave Cause, Nora Jones, Corrine Bailey Ray, Diana Krall, and Herb Albert. Many artists have grown up with the Goroffs and have sought their musical counseling since the 1980s. The father-son promotion team of Cliff and Jason Goroff have specialized in consulting marketing and smooth jazz and smooth AC radio promotion for over 20 years. They have a combined 65-plus years of music business history. Please welcome my guest today, Jason Goroff. Hi, Jason. Well, thank you. Hi, Terry. I want to thank you very much for inviting me to be on your show today and for that very warm introduction. You're so welcome, and and I wanted you to be one of my first guests. You know, this is um, this is the first month of my radio show, and and I think it's important for me to show the cross, um, just the, the the cross genre of the kind of people that are going to be guests on the show, all having very important things to do with the music industry, and we all share the same work ethic we all we all bring every every guest yourself included jason which is why i invited you is mm-hmm. we share passion and excitement and enthusiasm for music well that's for sure there's one thing that i can tell you i know about you terry and i feel the same about our company and that is we are very very passionate about this genre of music yes and you're very very honest about this genre of music also you know, you, you um, don't sugarcoat. You say what you feel and what you know, and, uh, and I appreciate that, that about you. Um, I want to jump right in. You okay. grew up in the music business. When did you know that you wanted to follow your dad, Cliff, into radio promotion? How old were you? Well, I was a young guy, and I remember um, going into my dad's office when I was a young guy, probably around 10, maybe even 11 years old. And at the time, uh, my dad, Cliff, was doing a pop radio promotion, and I would listen to my dad and some of his um, uh, employees on the phones promoting radio. And I thought to myself, you know, this is what I want to do. 
and, and you know, listening to uh, my dad promote bands like, you know, the Gap Band and uh, Yarborough and Peoples and um, Herb Alpert and many, many others, and listening to them promote the music on the phone, sometimes even swearing, smoking cigarettes, and I thought to myself, <laughs> as, even as a young guy, this is what I want to do. So I knew that I wanted to, to join my dad and work with my dad at a very young age, probably somewhere around 10 or 11 years old. And that was a very exciting time in music. I'm, I mean, I'm looking at the list back in 1981. Your dad was working with the Gap Band, Cool and the Gang, Stanley Clark, George Duke, e even Larry Graham. So you were exposed yeah. to some really wonderful music. And, and you were also, I imagine, exposed to the excitement of, of the, what it took to be part of a, a community and team and village to get that music on the radio. Well, absolutely, and I can remember, you know, with Cool and the Gang specifically, when uh, they were, were released, you know, I think one of the songs was Ladies' Night and another was Celebration, and of course those were very, very successful hit singles at pop radio, and I can remember my dad, you know, coming home at the end of the day, you know, all, uh, you know, jazzed up and excited about how well and, you know, the, those records were doing and maybe even gone to the top of the charts. So I got exposed to the, the buzz at a very early age. So... What are the qualities that you listen for in a song when you're choosing a single for an artist or for a record label? Well, the first thing we listen to and for is, is for the melody. We, we want, we're looking for a, a memorable, compelling, catchy melody. And I think that's really the same, whether you're talking about jazz or pop or rock or any genre of music, really, is memorable, compelling melodies. And so that's the first thing that we look for because that's what we know the radio stations are looking for. That makes sense. So, and I appreciate that you're saying that it, it's not really limited to a particular genre of music. Melody is melody. That's correct. Why don't, why don't we um, give an example of something that you, you chose? Um, because you and I have been working together since my Buddhist Ear record, and you chose the first single, which was a song called Mandela. So I want to play about 30 seconds of it. Uh, for the audience, and then you can talk about what it was you recognized in that song that made you choose that out of all the other songs on the record. So take a quick listen. Sounds great. So that's Mandela, the, the very first single that you chose from my Buddha's Ear record. What jumped out about that particular song for you? Well, I'm, I'm just going to go back to, you know, most of all, the melody. I mean, of course, there's, you know, world-class, you know, guitar performance and production, but really what stood out to us more than anything else was the catchy melody on Mandela. And that song, I should add, turned into a very big hit from the Buddha's Ear album. It sure did. It spent nine months on the charts, and it still gets radio play years later. So uh, you nailed it on that one. You know, one of the well, things about thank you, T Terry. <laughs> oh, I want to thank you for that when you said you know that I nailed it, but really you nailed it. I mean, <laughs> you know, we we couldn't do what we do without having great quality songs to work with. So thank right. you for for making our jobs easier. Uh, my my pleasure, and I want to give. Um, also share the credit with my co-writer on that, Keb Mo, and, and our guest artist, Mindy A. Bear on sax, which certainly uh, even added more to the, the melody that we came up with that still stands. So um, thank you guys for, and all the people that work on my records, really help bring my melodies alive. That's, that's an important part of what I do. Um, how, how does one learn to be a song promoter, Jason? Well, um, I think for me the, the answer is you know, going to be a little bit different than for anybody else because, of course, you know, I learned everything um, that I know from my dad. Uh, not everybody has that same advantage. But um, I have seen over my you know, 20 or so years in, in this business that um, sometimes it takes uh, starting at the very, very ground floor, so to speak. And, and I can give you examples of some folks that maybe even offered to work at a record company for free as an intern. And then right. they watch and they learn. And I've seen people that start as interns that grow into executives. 
So one way is to uh, consider starting uh, at, the, at the bottom and interning, even if it means for you know, no pay, and learning and proving your value to a record company and then working your way on up the ranks. And then the other thing that I could say is um, some of the uh, radio promoters, whether you're talking about you know, either record company promoters or independent promoters like myself, um, is that they came from radio. And so they, in particular, music directors who would be on the other end of the phone as we're promoting music, so they already right. have an idea, you know, and so the, the people that used to work in radio have, in some cases, turned to a song promotion. I want to talk, uh, when we get back, we're going to our first break, um, but I want to talk about a quote that you said to me, that song promotion is not an exact science. So when we come back from this break, uh, I'd like you to uh, talk about what you mean by that. And before we hit the break, why don't you tell everybody where they can find you? What's your website and where are you based? Okay, we're based in Henderson, Nevada, which is really just outside of Las Vegas. We're in the Las Vegas area. Uh, and, of course, the scope of our work is national, not just here in Las Vegas. Um, you can find us on, online at gorovmusic.com, and that's G-O-R-O-V, music.com. And if you'd like to send us an email, it's uh, info at gorovmusic.com. Thank you, Jason. So we're hitting our first break, and we're going to be right back with Jason Goroff, radio promoter, song promoter extraordinaire. Thank you. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio, to sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al Miola, Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Ready to get your groove on? Hi, this is Tim Dolbear from Eclectica Studios. I'm a full-time mixing and recording engineer. I work with Grammy winners, labels, and indie artists using state-of-the-art digital mixing and restoration tools and the very best in analog gear. Really, though, it's my ability to bring tracks to life and fulfill your vision for your music. This has made me sought after by producers and artists worldwide. So spend your time working on music and not chasing a mix down a rabbit hole. Go to timdolbear.com and check out our free one-song mix offer. Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. 
Hi, this is Tim Dolbear, host of Sound Experience here on Intertalk Radio. And Source Connect by Source Element is the essential tool that we use to link between my studio in Austin, Texas, and the WS radio station in San Diego. Now, with Source Connect, not only can we communicate in real time and with HD audio, but it's synced up and is of a high enough quality that I can use it for real time ADR work, remote recording, and overdubbing. And it even allows me to remotely control a DAW. Source Connect by Source Element affordable, high quality audio and video connection over the internet for all of your production needs. Welcome to Making It with Terry Woolman, the show that explores the secrets, successes, and strategies for making it in the music biz. And now, here's your host, Terry Woolman. I'm Terry Wallman with my guest Jason Goroff on Intertalk Radio, and you just heard another one of the singles that I uh, did not write but arranged and released, and Jason Goroff chose. Uh, this was uh, Little Drummer Boy from my Christmas record, A Joyful Noise. So, um, Jason, what what is the value? We're going to get back to the other question about the science of, of promoting and, and choosing sure. songs. But what's the value of releasing a Christmas or, or holiday song? Because I, I remember that you really encouraged me to do it, and I'm so glad that I did. Absolutely. Well, the main thing is that Christmas songs or Christmas albums are generally considered to be timeless. Um, you know, you could release a, a Christmas album, and um, every year you would see sales year after year, and, and the same thing in, in terms of radio airplay. So holiday releases are considered timeless, despite their generally limited shelf life. Um, as far as Christmas albums go in the smooth jazz radio format, usually the airplay begins right around Thanksgiving or the day after Thanksgiving. It kind of builds throughout the month of December and then culminates and peaks, let's just say, on, on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. So you've really only got about one month of active airplay. But again, holiday albums are generally timeless. And I, I agree. And so and I'm so grateful that you encouraged me to do it because uh, for two reasons. One is that I continue to get radio play every year now on not only that song, but the entire Christmas album. But secondly... You inspired me artistically because I went and recorded three songs for you so you had something, or for me, but so that we had something to choose from. And I enjoyed it so much and felt so moved by the experience that it moved me to do an entire Christmas album after that first Christmas season. So thank you for pushing me uh, uh, down that road. Well, of course. And I have to say, you've come up with, some really great, unique arrangements of some <laughs> holiday classics. And, and Little Drummer Boy has really been, I'd say, my own personal favorite holiday song over the years. And the thing about Christmas music, again, in the smooth jazz genre, is you know they've already got, the radio stations have already got several versions of Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas or Jingle right. Bells or Little Drummer Boy. But where I think you really I- excelled is that you've come up with your own unique arrangements of those holiday classics and giving them your own sort of personality. Thank you. I, re- I really appreciate that. And, and I gave it a lot of thought before I, I moved forward on doing it because that was the only way I felt comfortable was to really find my own voice and my own way to do, to redo songs that in, in my mind were timeless and already done to perfection by the original artist. Absolutely. You did a great so, job of it. Well, thank you. So sure. back to um, song promotion, you've told me that it is not an exact science. What do you mean by that? Well, um, really, it's not an exact science because every song sounds different. And so the way that you approach the promotion is going to be different based on the, each individual song's um, 
you know, uh, uh, well, melody, really. I keep going back to melody. But the, the real reason why I say I'm that glad. it's not an exact science is, again, because every song sounds different than the next. And so we have to pr- approach the promotion differently for each song. Right. That makes sense. Well, and then, and then the other thing, too, is regarding, you know, timing. Um, yes. You know, and I'll let you and, and your listeners in on a, a little secret, and that is, you know, and this is a, sort of a, a generalization, but, um, you know, generally songs that are released to radio earlier in the year tend to perform better on the charts than those that are released later in the year. And the reason for that is that there's more space on radio playlists, uh, you know, in the months of January, February, and March uh, than any other time during the year. Is that because artists generally want to, put their records out during the holiday so that they can sell them as holiday gifts? Yes, that's exactly right. And, and you know, that really they start to release their, you know, the, the uh, let's say, heavy hitter type artists tend to release to radio starting, you know, like now in August so that they've got, you know, um, a lot of airplay throughout the fall and into the uh, holiday buying season. So, yes, you're absolutely right. Well, and, and, and we also had a very interesting experience with, with my singles, because after we we released Little Drummer Boy and came back into January, we thought we were going to need to promote a new single, but radio picked up the single that had been playing previously and started spinning that again. That was Mandela, and it continued to move up the charts after the holiday yes, season. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. And that's really a tribute to the strength of that song, because normally... Mm. You know, once you get to January, um, you know, the radio stations are sort of, uh, they've been up to their eyeballs and jingle bells throughout the month <laughs> right. of December, and they can't wait to get back to their regularly scheduled programming, let's just say. Um, and, you know, at that, at that point, usually there's like an out with the old and in with the new mentality, right. and they're looking for new music. But because Mandela is such a strong song, they continued mm-hmm. to add it, and the spins just continued to, to go up. And like you said, we were on the charts for nine months with Mandela. That's not the norm, Terry. Normally, songs will be up and on the charts for maybe four or five months at, at, you know, on the high end. So the fact that we were out and had such success with Mandela over such a long period of time is really, really a tribute to the strength of that song. Well, thank you. And you just answered one of my other questions, which is the average <laughs> life of a radio single. Uh, but yeah, three to four months is, is a good run for a single. Um, Three to four months, or maybe even five months, Terry, if it's a hit single. On the other side, you know, if there's a song that the radio stations just don't go for, you know, it could be done after the first four to six weeks. Right. Even if you think it's a great song. That's absolutely right. Well, it's art, so it's subjective. Well, that's, again, you're, you're right about that, too. Music is art, and art is subjective. And, of course, subjective means that some people are going to like it, and others might not. Mm Mm-hmm. You, you've you said to me in the past that the most difficult part of your job is having to turn down an artist when you don't feel that the song is right for your market. How does that typically go? Well, again, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's really the hardest part of what I do because, um, you know, I'll, I'll get a, a phone call or an email from an artist that's put literally all of their time, effort, energy, money uh, into recording what in, in their mind is you know, a musical masterpiece. And if it's right. not something that I feel like I can help, you know, deliver and get the kind of results that that artist is looking for, I've got to say no. And that's very hard for me to do. Not mm-hmm. only am I telling the artist that, you know, for lack of a better term, that maybe their baby is ugly, but I'm also <laughs> turning down potential income. And so neither of those things are, are easy for me to do. So, so saying no is literally the hardest part of what I do. I understand that, and, and being on the receiving, receiving end of no as an artist is certainly a difficult place to be as well. Um, yeah. So I understand your your sensitivity and compassion and appreciate that, but I also really respect the amount of the, the, the integrity, what we started speaking about at the beginning of the show. That's a level of integrity that you maintain that allows you – in my mind, and I believe probably in the eyes of all of your clients, artists, as well as radio stations, it, it keeps your street cred very high. Well, thank you. And yes, absolutely. I've got to be a straight shooter. I just, I have to. That's just, that, that's who I am. I've got to give it to you or whoever straight, whether the news is good or bad or anywhere in between. I'm just going to give it to you as, as straight as I possibly can. Um, and I'm not right all the time. I, I really am not. I mean, I think my, my percentages, along with my dad's ears, our percentages 
are really pretty good, but I, I, you know, I'm not right all the time, and I recognize that. And, you know, I'm, I'm really so curious and, and interested and focused on this show on process as well, the creative process. And one of the things that you and I and your dad have done in every single that we've chosen and working together is I have my opinion, but I don't give it to you until I hear yours because I don't want you to be influenced. Not that you would be, but I don't want you to be influenced by what I think or what I'm attached to. Uh, because I'm very close to the project. So it's always a fun part of our creative process when choosing what single is going to be first or next is to see if we're like-minded. And, and we, we have been on, on, on most parts. You know, we, sometimes we change the order of what we're going to release, right. but we always seem to be aligned with which songs we think are the strongest for radio and for the time you know, the period that we're, we're putting things out. But it's, it's fun for me. It's kind of like opening, a, well, I'm Jewish, so I didn't open Christmas presents, but <laughs> just ah. the opening of Christmas presents where they're sitting under the tree and, and you can't wait to see what's in the present. And for me, the present is waiting to hear what you've chosen as a single from my, you know, current record. It's really a, always kind of a, a treat for me and exciting. Well, a absolutely. And uh, it, it's fun for me, too, especially when it turns out that we're on the same page. And, you know, sometimes <laughs> th th those decisions are easier than others, you know, but in the case of Mandela, that was just a no-brainer. That was an easy decision. That one right. jumped out, you know, big time. And Mandela was just a very easy call for your first single. Yeah. Well, um, thank you again for that. And uh, we're all still reaping the benefits. Um, we're heading into commercial. I want to let people know they can find out more about me at terrywallman.com or uh, my Facebook page. My artist page is Terry Wallman uh, Artist. No, it's not. I'll have to get back to you on that. <laughs> you go to my website. That's where everything is, terrywallman.com. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio, to sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear, host of Sound Experience here on Intertalk Radio. And Source Connect by Source Element is the essential tool that we use to link between my studio in Austin, Texas, and the WS radio station in San Diego. Now, with Source Connect, not only can we communicate in real time and with HD audio, but it's synced up and is of a high enough quality that I can use it for real time ADR work, remote recording, and overdubbing. And it even allows me to remotely control a DAW. Source Connect by Source Element, affordable, high quality audio and video connection over the internet for all of your production needs. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al DiMiola, Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Ready to get your groove on? Has your business been appified? Are you tired of doing marketing that doesn't deliver results? Mobile apps build loyalty and quality retention. Your app from UPG Mobile puts your business on their mind and at their fingertips. UPG Mobile will give you a custom app highlighting how you are unique, targeting your message, and improving your open rates. 
amplify your business and amplify your presence with your customers at upgmobilemarketinggroup.com. Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear. Welcome to Making It with Terry Woolman, the show that explores the secrets, successes, and strategies for making it in the music biz. And now, here's your host, Terry Woolman. Welcome back. I'm Terry Wallman and uh, speaking to Jason Garoff, radio promoter. And that's another single of mine that you chose and, and did quite well on the radio. And it features a, a fantastic artist and longtime friend of us both, Dave Cause. Um, I want to read a, a quote from Dave uh, about you. Simply put, okay. Cliff and Jason are geniuses. They've been deeply involved in every one of my albums as far back as I can remember, and I've lost count of how many singles that have helped, they've helped propel to number one. I'm forever indebted to the Garofs for the amazing passion they put into their work, their huge years, and for the unflappable support and commitment. Even more importantly, they're wonderful human beings who care deeply about music. I feel very honored to call them dear friends, Dave Cause. And one other partial quote from me, Uh, Also on your website, in my over 25 years of making records, I can easily say that the smartest business move I've made was choosing Garoff Music to promote me. Secret to my success, start with a good song and end with Garoff Music Marketing, the best of the best. Their integrity, passion, and love of music mirrors my own, and I'm honored to call Jason and Cliff my friends. Uh, There are many quotes like that that I have seen, not just on your website, but hearing directly from people um, you are very highly respected in the music industry, and um, and I think I just wanted to to just kind of point that out to you. <laughs> There's not even a question. I just think it's important for people to to um, get their props and 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 know how much they're appreciated. So you are very appreciated, Jason. Well, Terry, thank you very much for for saying that and for the warm <laughs> uh, words that you uh, just said from yourself and, and of course from Dave and. It's just, it's an honor. And, and um, But at the same time, I also know that I, is what we talked about earlier, I couldn't do what I do without having great music to promote. I, I do think that God has blessed me and, and my father with having good, a good ear for music, and that's helped us, you know, in the selection of songs and, and everything else. Uh, but it really is more about what you, the artist, create, and then us taking it to radio rather than anything that we do to reinvent right. the wheel, so to speak. Did you study music in college or when you were a kid growing up? Um, a little bit, Terry. I, I remember I started taking um, cello when I was in middle school. I, I went oh, to uh, L- Lincoln a Junior High School there in, in Santa Monica, right. and uh, I, I took cello lessons. And uh, I was doing pretty well with the cello. Um, he, here mm-hmm. was the problem, and here was the reason why I, I really didn't continue. So I lived about a mile or so away from my uh, junior high school. And the cello, as you know, is not a small instrument. And so I would literally have to lug the cello. I would walk, you know, almost a mile back and forth 
to and from school every day, and that cello got heavy. And one day I, had, uh, I, I saw a shopping cart along my way, and I said, oh, what a great idea. I'm going to put my cello in the shopping cart, and I, I wheeled it the rest of the way to school. Well, when I got to the band room that morning, I, I opened up my cello case, and I found that my cello was completely cracked. I oh. must have gone over a curb or, or something, and the cello, uh, it, well, didn't really make it. It was, it was all cracked up. It was really pretty mm. bad. Uh, unfortunately, the school, uh, they weren't so nice about it. And they said, eh? well, geez, you're going to have to pay for that, and, and that's going to be about a $400 replacement. And, and at the time, mm. as a 13- or 14-year-old kid, Four hundred dollars might might as well have been you know four thousand or forty thousand you know right. uh, and I remember literally having tears streaming down my face as they called my parents to tell them what had happened and that really unfortunately kind of turned me off and that was the end of my my cello career. Understandably, as you spent the next three years of your life mowing lawns and cleaning pools to pay off that cello uh, repair loan, <laughs> correct? Well, thankfully, they didn't really uh, ever oh, enforce the repayment. <laughs> I never had to repay, repay that, but it's still the, their attitude, the school's attitude just really turned me off at the time. That's kind of sad, actually, um, but I'm glad that to know that you, um, you chose a very cool instrument and had a good experience with it for the time that you did. I did. It was for a year or maybe two, something like that. But um, I eventually kind of re- rechanneled my, my passion for music into the marketing and promotion side as opposed to the creative side. Right. Uh, you specialize in promoting a specific genre of music, smooth jazz. But over the past few years, I've, I've seen a trend towards radio, jazz cruises and festivals being more inclusive to R&B, pop, blues, world music and other styles. I personally think that's great. What are your thoughts about music crossing borders of genre and style? Well, I really think that it's a, a fabulous idea to try to mix it up a little bit and to incorporate some of the uh, other genres, you know, of maybe like adult urban and some of the hits, let's just say, from adult urban radio and mixing it up with, uh, in terms of smooth jazz radio, mixing the instrumental tracks with some of the vocal hits that are crossing over from, from some of the other genres. I think personally that's a, a great way to help draw in and pull in new and younger listeners from other radio formats. Right, and also to expose listeners to the format that you promote to other styles of music they might not have been as open to. That, that's exactly right. Um, you know, I, I would say, you know, that lately and over the you know, more very recent past, um, you know, some of the radio stations have actually started to phase out some of those crossover vocals and are focusing more on just the pure instrumentals. And I, I'm not so sure I agree that that's, that's the right idea, but, you know, to each their own, I suppose. From, from your perspective as a promoter, how have you seen radio and the music business change in the past few years and also over the course of your life? Well, specifically as it relates to radio and smooth jazz radio, um, when I first started uh, in about 1992, I believe, there were a ton of smooth jazz radio stations across the country. Almost every major city had a smooth jazz radio station, yeah. and they continued to thrive through the early 2000s. Um, in, I would say, the mid-2000s, right around 2005, maybe it was 2006, a new... Um, means of measuring radio ratings came into play, and it was uh, called the Portable People Meter. And unfortunately, Portable People Meter, or PPM, wasn't really very kind to the smooth jazz genre. And so we started losing a lot of stations. Um, What that led to eventually was for smooth jazz to absolutely explode on the Internet. And nowadays, ironically, we're servicing more radio stations than we did even at the, the format's heyday, and that's because of the absolute explosion of the genre on the Internet. And, and I, I don't have any statistics to back me up, but I would say that smooth jazz is probably the number one radio format on the Internet, online. Well, that brings me to talking about charts, because it used to be that the, the, the golden ring was the billboard charts. To, to chart on billboard was, was the goal, but now we've got billboard, media base, smoothjazz.com, smooth indie star, smoothjazz.com radar, uh, smooth jazz top 20, smooth jazz top 50, groove jazz airplay, and radio wave internet airplay. I think that covers uh, the, the charts that, um, 
that you follow and 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 go after is that is that accurate and tell me about yeah you just named every single one you uh <laughs> yes that that th- those are the charts that we're promoting too and you know what you had said is true i mean billboard for a long long time has been sort of the gold standard and i mean even to this day a lot of artists when they call me about promoting their music is well do you think we can get on the billboard charts mm-hmm um, you know, and I'm not discounting Billboard because it, it, it is what it is. It definitely has strong, you know, name value. But I would also say that, you know, recently um, the most passionate fans of, of our genre of, of smooth jazz are listening online. And unfortunately, Billboard really doesn't have any online radio stations that comprise their smooth jazz panel. On the other hand, the smoothjazz.com chart, the groove jazz internet uh, chart, and the radio wave internet chart all very much incorporate not only online radio, but HD radio and AM and FM and satellite. So they really incorporate all different forms of radio. And because I do believe that the most passionate fans are listening online, that in my mind makes all those other charts equally as important. That makes sense. And and I I think uh, internet radio uh, is is very similar to what cable was when um, it was just three networks and then all the cable companies came in and now there's amazing programming and a lot of viewership on on cable TV. Uh, even our radio show, the one that we're doing right now, is on internet radio, and it's one of the things that excites me because it allows me to uh, speak freely and and choose my format and and we can speak our point of view. Um, and uh, really do important work, you know, so uh, yeah. I get that. Here's a quick question. We've got about 20 seconds before our next commercial. Do you listen to music when you're not working, or do you kind of just the stay time. away from it? I, all the time, Terry. I, I, I love music, and so I listen to music as much as I possibly can, not just jazz, but I'm a big fan of rock music. I'm a music lover, so absolutely yes. Oh, that's great. Um, speaking with Jason Goroff, we're going into our final break, and uh, I'm Terry Wallman. We'll see you in a minute. Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. Each week I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear, host of Sound Experience here on Intertalk Radio. And Source Connect by Source Element is the essential tool that we use to link between my studio in Austin, Texas, and the WS radio station in San Diego. Now, with Source Connect, not only can we communicate in real time and with HD audio, but it's synced up and is of a high enough quality that I can use it for real time ADR work, remote recording, and overdubbing, and it even allows me to remotely control a DAW. Source Connect by Source Element, affordable, high quality audio and video connection over the internet for all of your production needs. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear from Eclectica Studios. I'm a full-time mixing and recording engineer. I work with Grammy winners, labels, and indie artists using state-of-the-art digital mixing and restoration tools and the very best in analog gear. Really, though, it's my ability to bring tracks to life and fulfill your vision for your music. This has made me sought after by producers and artists worldwide. So spend your time working on music and not chasing a mix down a rabbit hole. Go to timdolbear.com and check out our free one song mix offer. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. 
I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al Miola, Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Ready to get your groove on? Welcome to Making It with Terry Woolman, the show that explores the secrets, successes, and strategies for making it in the music biz. And now, here's your host, Terry Woolman. I'm back with Jason Garth, my guest for this episode of Making It with Terry Wallman. And we wanted to play you a little bit more of a piece called Obrigado, which you hear uh, at the beginning of the show in, in and out of the breaks, uh, because it's the, it was chosen as the theme music for this show. But it was also another one of the singles, Jason, that you uh, chose and did quite well on, on radio and, and on the charts. Well, thank you, Terry. And I, I remember on Obrigado um, that we had some really strong feedback on that song from a very important radio programmer there in Los Angeles. And if mm-hmm. I remember correct, there was actually another song from the album that we were talking about as your second single and Obrigado as a possible third single. But because of the feedback from this uh, radio programmer, we decided to switch it up and we went with Obrigado as the second right. single. I had forgotten that. Yeah, so... Um, so we're absolutely open to you know hearing feedback from radio. I'm not so much stuck on just you know my opinion. If we hear some really good things from important radio programmers, we can certainly take that, and we did take that into consideration. Yeah, I I think it's so important to be open in life. You know, with with being able to um, have a very clear point of view and and the ability to express it, but also to be willing to be flexible. And I, I appreciate about that, that about you and your dad. And, and also it's, it's the way that I go through life as well. So I, I think it's one of the reasons we work so well together. Uh, no doubt in, in business and in life, it, it always makes sense to be flexible for sure. Yeah. And, and also to speak clearly, like I would encourage anybody, any artist who is working with any part of their team, radio promoter, marketing people, um, mixers, engineers, um, whatever, whatever part of uh, that, that business that you're doing, you know, speak your mind, speak your heart, you know, and, and be open and, and be willing to take people's advice that you, you trust. But, um, you know, our, our relationship is very uh, easy and uh, we never hesitate to give our opinion to each other. And, and uh, that I think that makes for a great business partnership and creative process and creative partnership. No question, Terry. Uh, uh, kumbaya, as they say. <laughs> hey, I, I want to talk about something that's controversial, which is payola. And it's mm-hmm. a word that uh, people don't say out loud on radio and you don't hear very often. But uh, you have never been involved in any kind of a pay-to-play promotion. And in 1986, there was an article in the L.A. Times that followed up, up on an NBC News report that was focusing on record companies, payola. Um, your dad was quoted in it as um, saying that business had dropped more than 60% in uh, the company that he had at the time. And it didn't even have anything to do with you. You weren't involved in it, but it still impacted your business. Um, How did your, even though you weren't involved in this, how did your family 
business survive this? Yeah, it, it was a case, and this, again, it was a little bit before my time. This was uh, what you're talking about, Terry, happened in the mid-1980s, and I didn't right. join the team until around 1992. But my dad tells the story of um, everything you described as sort of like guilt by association. Uh -huh. And there were a few, let's just say, bad apples who were involved with pay-for-play that sort of spoiled it for the whole bunch. Um, and my dad's business at the time suffered uh, horribly. I, I remember those years around 1986 and into 1987 were literally some of the worst financial years of, of my family's life. And I can even tell you um, at the time, uh, although my dad did continue with you know, music promotion at a, a much smaller uh, scale, obviously, our, our family had a side business and that was selling uh, items at swap meets on the weekends. And, and that's yeah. what we did to make ends meet for a couple of years, for, from right mm -hmm. around 1986 till uh, sometime in 1987. But ironically, that whole scandal that went down in the mid-1980s is what eventually led my dad to form our, our sort of current company. At, at the time, it was all that jazz, uh, and now we've sort of morphed into you know, Gorov Music Marketing. But it was that mm -hmm. whole payola scandal in the 1980s that led uh, to the creation of all that jazz. Speaking of your relationship with your dad, um, I have a two-part question. What's been the favorite part of working with your dad at Goroff Music? And, and also, in what ways has your dad's life and work ethic influenced you? Well, it's great working with my dad. 90% of the time, it's great working <laughs> with my dad. We, we've, I like working we've, with your dad, but he's not my dad. So <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Um, you know, it, it's, it's great because we've always had a very close relationship and to be able to you know come into work every day and do what I do alongside my dad is just really it's a tremendous honor really um, and it allows us to you know spend a lot of time together I'm not going to say that we don't butt heads because we absolutely do uh, especially mm -hmm. as my dad is getting maybe a little bit into his twilight years uh, <laughs> but as an overall it's really an honor to work alongside my dad who has taught me literally everything I know about music promotion and he knows a lot. Uh, he absolutely does. And, um, you know, g going back to your last, you know, point and question about that, you know, payola scandal, um, you know, so there was some, some rough times, like I said, in our family uh, until a point where my dad tells the story that he had a good friend by the name of Larry Douglas, and Larry worked at Epic Records. And one day, Larry invited my dad up to his office, and he said, we just got this new artist, she's from Europe, and I want to play it for you. I want you to know if there's anything you think you can do to help, you know, at, at radio. And he handed my dad a cassette tape, and the artist was the female vocalist, Basha. Uh, and I'm sure you remember Basha. She um, of course. Uh, turned into a huge pop artist. And my dad, Cliff, was really kind of at the helm and in the, in the driver's seat, let's just say, uh, of breaking her at, at radio. And it started at some of the jazz stations. And at the time, there was no real smooth jazz. It was like either the jazz, more like contemporary jazz, or right. Quiet Storm. And the airplay on Basha began at the Jazz and Quiet Storm stations, and then they eventually crossed it over to pop radio, and Basha became a huge artist, a million seller, and then that uh, led to more uh, records and more business through uh, the Epic label for my dad, and that's what eventually led to uh, the creation of all that jazz. Oh, beautiful. We're nearing the, the end of our show. I, I want to end with asking you one more question. At sure. this chapter of your life, with everything that you know to be true, what would you say to your younger self? Well, that's a great question. Um, I think that the most important thing is follow through, and that is mm -hmm. that's one thing I think that that I've has been you know a big part of our success. And that is when you tell somebody you're going to do something, you always follow through. And if you can't follow through, you better call and explain why. Uh, so uh, in terms of, you know, note to, to a younger self, it would be to always follow through on w what you say you're going to do. Thank you. This has uh, been a really wonderful episode. Uh, my guest today has been Jason Garoff. Uh, why don't you give your website again one more time so people know where to find you? Sure. Our website is gorovmusic.com, and that's G-O-R-O-V music.com. And we're also up on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I would highly encourage anybody who has a, a record out and they're thinking about finding a promoter 
to consider the Goroffs. Uh, they're, they're one of the best. Uh, I'm Terry Wallman. You're listening to Making It with Terry Wallman on Enter Talk Radio, and I look forward to seeing everybody next week uh, with my guest, Melanie Taylor. And my website again is terrywallman.com. It's been my pleasure to share this hour with you, Jason. Thank you so much. Terry, thank you so much. It's been an honor. I want to thank you and your team for having me with you today. It's very much appreciated. You got it. next week for another great episode of Making It with Terry Wong. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats shredding guitar or making the crowd roar whatever you dream pitbull audio can help make it happen we are pitbull audio we want you to play it loud pitbullaudio.com this is jackie bertoni from jackie's groove come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as i take you behind the velvet rope interviewing industry notables such as al Miola, michael mcdonald and al Giroux, to name but a few listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Ready to get your groove on? Hey, it's Catherine from Listen Local Radio. Moe's Guitars has proudly served the San Diego music community since 1975. Specializing in guitars, basses, mandolins, banjos, and ukuleles, they buy, sell, trade, and consign. If you're looking for lessons, repairs, accessories, and cool gear, you found the right place. Located in downtown La Mesa Village, stop by and check out their digs or visit mosguitars.com or their Facebook page, mozeguitars.com, 619-698-1185. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear, host of Sound Experience here on InterTalk Radio. And Source Connect by Source Element is the essential tool that we use to link between my studio in Austin, Texas, and the WS radio station in San Diego. Now, with Source Connect, not only can we communicate in real time and with HD audio, but it's synced up and is of a high enough quality that I can use it for real time ADR work, remote recording, and overdubbing, and it even allows me to remotely control a DAW. Source Connect by Source Element, affordable, high quality audio and video connection over the internet for all of your production needs. Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on InterTalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release, and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on InterTalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. Unforgettable. 